Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cupcake, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this, the first episode in the new tutorial series. Yay! Now for this episode, we are just going to go over the basic stuff that you need to know for flying and operating VTOLs. Now I suppose a good place to start would be to ask the question, what is a VTOL? Now for me, a VTOL, or dropship, which might be a better description for my craft, is some sort of vessel where you have an engine that's mounted vertically producing thrust, be that a rocket or a jet. This is combined with horizontal control. Usually in the case of my craft that'll be a cockpit, but it can be a probe core or even a docking port. Now unlike a plane, a dropship is very much a three-dimensional craft, meaning you can fly it in any direction you like. If you're feeling a bit adventurous, you can have a go at flying sideways. Or if you really want to impress people, you can have a go at flying backwards. Personally, I prefer forwards, but see how you get on. Now, I think you guys will agree that the terrain here is just absolutely stunning. And in my opinion, the best way to learn how to fly dropships is just to get out and explore. Kerbin is a beautiful, beautiful planet. And there's just so much to see and so much good flying to be had. Incidentally, this area I'm flying through now is a mountain range that borders the polar ice cap in the far north of the planet. Well worth checking out. For now though, let's get back to the spaceport. Now, I think the reason we don't have more dropship pilots in KSP is probably because of this monstrosity. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Squad, amazing company, but by god this thing is hideous. Let's start with the control. It's, as you can see, it's a very long shape, which means the pitch is pretty slow. But the roll is really fast because it's also slender. The range is terrible. Uh, you'll be lucky to get it around the spaceport and back. And it is, ugh. Sorry, I, I just really hate this craft. Really, really hate it. And we're gonna crash. Yeah, it's probably for the best. So for this tutorial, I highly recommend using the Wraith Model T, a link to which can be found in the description. Before we get started though, we are just going to take a few minutes and set up a joystick, something that is highly recommended for flying dropships. So if you just go to the settings and go to input, the first tab is general. We'll start there and just map the abort button. The T-Model Wraith comes with a pair of parachutes, so if you do find yourself in trouble, just hit the abort button and hopefully you'll have a smooth trip back down to Earth. Now we can move to the next tab and just map the staging button. Now with my combat VTOLs, I use staging to fire missiles, so I generally map this to the trigger. Also in the same tab, we have the RCS translation controls. Now it's worth mapping these to the stick because it means you won't have to use the docking mode, which is a pain in the bum. Generally, I use the big buttons for forward, backwards, left and right, and the smaller ones to translate up and down, as I find it's a bit less confusing that way. With that done, we can go across and just set up the main axes, so that's the pitch, roll and yaw. We can also set up the dead zones, we just want to get them as tight as possible without them interfering with the SAS. With my joystick, the yaw is starting to wear out a bit, hence why I'm having to set it quite high. Because of this fact, I'm a bit reluctant to recommend Logitech joysticks to people now. Oh, and with the throttle, you may have to use the invert button just to get the axes moving the right way. At least I did on this stick. Finally, we just want to go to the miscellaneous tab and use the hat at the top of the joystick to control the camera. This involves setting two axes, vertical and horizontal. We also want to map the two buttons next to it to allow us to zoom in and out. Now the reason we want these view controls within easy reach is because flying a dropship, especially at low altitudes like this, is all about situational awareness. You've really got to have a look around almost constantly and just see what the terrain is doing in relation to your craft. If you don't, if you kind of just look in one direction or you're looking in the wrong direction, then the ground can sometimes creep up on you and that's not a good thing, it makes lots of explosions. Okay, let's get into it. So we can set full throttle, press 1 to light the jet engine, and 3 to turn on our navigation lights. 
In addition to looking cool, these lights just help us judge how close we are to the terrain. Or how close we are to crashing into it, shall I say. While they are very efficient, the jet engines suffer from something called throttle lag, which means they take a long time to spool up and spool down, and are generally quite unresponsive. For this reason, all my jet powered craft also have rocket assist, which can be used for emergency power, like this. These rockets can be activated by pressing 2. By using the rockets, you can also cancel out most of the lag from the jet engines. This will let you do some very precise flying. One of the most difficult things to master when learning to fly dropships is hovering. Now if I concentrate, and I, I really am here, I can just about get the speed down to 0.1 or 0.2 meters per second. At those sort of speeds and that level of control, you're kind of running into the dead zone of the joystick. Now when you're learning to hover, it pays to do it close to the ground, so you've got plenty of visual references and you can see where the craft is moving. Okay, I think that'll do. As you hone your skills and get a bit more confident, you can start exploring the more scenic aspects of the Space Center. Here, we're just going to have a look through one of the tunnels. So, as you noticed, I've just staged to get rid of the drop tanks, because otherwise I don't think we are going to fit through here. It's going to be quite a tight squeeze, but... Oh no! Oh look at that. It was made for it. Once you've mastered the Wraith, you can move on to larger craft like the Spectre Model T. Now while it handles well for its size, this vessel isn't as responsive or as manoeuvrable as the Wraith. It's got a lot more momentum to it and you'll have to really learn the rhythm of the ship, so we say, so you don't end up overcorrecting. OK guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I'm going to try and cap it off by doing a bit of precision landing. I'm not sure if this is a terribly good idea or even if it will work, but we'll give it a go. So I'm trying to land on the top antenna here. Um, yeah, I know, it's pretty stupid. Um, it's quite tricky because, as I was talking about before, I haven't got any visual references around me, so it's very difficult to judge where that pole is exactly you know, in 3D space. I'm almost having to feel my way onto it and... Oh, wait. Oh, okay. We're there. Bit rough, but it'll do. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will look forward to making another one for you soon. Bye for now.